back. It's been a few days. I just thought I'd um, catch up with you. Today, we're gonna talk about this guy over here, Mr. Snake, Mr. Cobra. Um, I was gonna do some other videos, but technical problems, can't do that. So I thought, we'll do the snake, why not? It's another interesting build and you seem to like them, so same setup. I'll do the photos, I'll look at the photos here and they'll be there when I do the editing. So this one was a really interesting one to do. I tried previously to make one out of candle wax actually, it came out really well. But um, it just, over time, heat and just it just deteriorated and started to fall apart so I ended up burning it as you would, it's a candle. Um, but I always wanted to remake one. And um, when I first got into the clay, I was originally looking for a 3D printer. Um, and I was gonna make a, a, one of these snakes on the 3D printer. So I suppose this was always gonna be my first, because this is my actual first sculpture I ever did with this clay. Um, so this is it, this is my little journey with the Cobra. Um, I've done a bit of research, looked at some pictures online and different things. And um, so I had them all set up on the computer, at the clay and, and yeah, so we started off as per usual with my very first tin foil base. After watching endless YouTube videos to show me how to do the tin foil before the clay. So this is the start. I've, um, actually that is not the start, that's the start. Right, um, so here you can see that I've uh, basically moulded the shape of the head, but really flat, I kept it really thin, because I, I was aware that the inside of the mouth and the top of the head, there wasn't going to be that much thickness, because snakes obviously don't have that much thickness. So I started the basic shape, and, um, and I worked down the back of the snake, got the curve going, because he's supposed to be like, well, like you can see, he's angry. And then I've gradually tailed it off to try and make the length of a full size snake. Because obviously I was going to curl it up after, but it's always good to, if you're going to make a snake, it's always good to kind of gauge how, how long a snake would be. And then get your tin foil out to that level and then you can curl it back round and bring it into the structure that you want. So that's what I did. And then I put a piece of wire for the bottom jaw and just wrap that around as well, just to give it that bit of structure. See, this was always gonna be an interesting one because I wanted him up high and it was always gonna be quite difficult as to the pivot and whether whether the I wanted the bottom bit to be thicker to hold the top bit. You'll find out as the journey goes on, it wasn't quite that simple. So basically, I've built my tin foil and then I've put him into the shape that I want him, as you can see here. I was really happy with that. He looked quite um, quite forbidding just in the tin foil. So I did that and then started to lay down some clay. As, as I've done with all my sculptures since, I've always just put a thin layer of clay over everything first before I start putting detailed clay on. So I was just using up some, um, some clay that I'd just been playing around with before I did my first sculpture really. So that there's a mix of colors, but I was just, uh, yeah, just putting a base down to give it some, give it some stability, basically. Um, and as you can see, I'm just building it up, putting a little bit of um, detail, extra detail on the edges at this point. So I was, I've put one layer and then I've started to put the scales on as well. Um, and you can see more clearly there that you can see the, the brown is just basic layer and then the outer edge is starting to have the actual scales and at this point it was looking pretty good already I was quite happy and um, yeah I just kept building him up and um, yeah just making the basic shapes and getting the jaw how I wanted it to be because I wanted him to be quite uh, you know it was as if he was going to spit um, and then then I started to lay the the pattern in. I thought it was really an unusual pattern because um, I looked online at the colours and the pattern. I don't know if it works the same with these as it does with tigers but it's quite an unusual pattern and I uh, 
I was a bit worried it might look a bit odd in the clay, but I thought you, if you want to do an authentic snake, you've got to go with the colour and you've got to go with the pattern. So that's what I did. I just used a, a picture that was online and I just went with that. Uh, and to be fair, as I started to build it up, it made more sense. So I carried on building up the, the belly and um, just playing around with the shape of the jaw a little bit to make it all work. Um, and then when I got to the top, as you can see here, I started to put the um, two different colours going together because the scales adopted the belly colour as well on the underneath. It was quite interesting actually. I was quite finding it quite fascinating. But what I was doing is I was putting, as you'll see a bit further on, I was putting the, the bits of clay on, quite lumpy, to get them where I wanted them and then blended them in more so that it became more like skin-like. Uh, so that's quite liney and quite bumpy at the moment in this photo, but it does get smoother as I start to work it in. Like you can see the bottom of the belly now is starting to look just like much smoother. It's still got the lines, but it's it's a lot smoother. So yeah, I was really enjoying it at this point and the pattern was kind of making sense. I, I mean, it was what it was in front of me on the screen with a real snake, so I couldn't really argue with it. But what I did start to find is that the snake was starting to dip down quite a lot so I was kind of propping him up all the time doing a bit of work on him then he'd fall a bit and then I'd prop him back up and I put some eyes in these were just supposed to be temporary eyes but when I put them in it really started to make him look quite aggressive and quite cobra-ish and I thought you know what I might just keep them because they're starting to work with the overall sculpture and then I started to build around the jaw with the scales. It was quite interesting working with the really light and the really dark because I had to keep washing my hands all the time so that I didn't colour transfer over. Um, but yeah, he was he was really starting to take shape. I was really happy with him at this point. Um, he had the, you know, the muscle in the neck was quite poignant. I wasn't sure if I liked it or not, but then I thought, yeah, that that's, that's how it's got to be because he's so yeah I was um I was quite happy and like I said look at his face he's he's just got something eerie about him like he's proper angry snake so I was like yeah I can live with that I put more scale detail on and um my thumbprint my fingerprints were embedding into the clay and it was actually given given it a real skin like texture, which I found really fascinating. So I, I just kept I just went with that. I didn't try and smooth it out or anything. So um, yeah, he was he was really starting to look. Ooh. And for my first sculpture, I was getting quite excited. I thought I'm quite I'm quite I'm getting quite good results here. Um, and then you can see from above. You can see how that eye looks just so ugh, deadly. I think it's how I had the clay over the eye ball itself slightly. It just gave it such attitude. I thought those eyes are staying. I love them. Um, <laughs> now you could look at this two ways. He's either smiling or he's about to bite someone. Although he didn't have any teeth at this point. So he's not biting anybody. Um, yeah, but he had some attitude going on already. I was really happy with that. Um, and this is where I'm prepping the clay because I had to do hundreds and hundreds of scales, little tiny bits of clay all the way over him. And I had to get it uniform because on a cobra, it's very uniform. Other snakes, not well, they're obviously uniform, but they're big and small, big and small. and a bit more patchy, but with the Cobra, they seem to be very neat and very precise. So I had to spend a lot of time um, pressing these in place first and then pushing them down and smoothing them as I went along. So it all took a sort of skin-like texture. So that was, that was a lot of work. But um, look, I mean, look, it's so worth it because I think the detail is exactly what you want. If you take a bit of time, 
And you can see what I mean about the fingerprint into the clay as well. It looks amazing. Um, so yeah, I was really loving it at this point. I thought it's got a proper reptile kind of feel about it. So now you can see if you look at the top of this picture, there's a piece of string coming out the top of his mouth and going out through the top of his head. I had to set up a bar um, up and over and then tie a piece of string to it and then tie it inside the back of his mouth and then up to just hold him up because he was properly doing this every day and I was getting fed up with it. So I was like, you're going to need to be propped up so that I can do the rest. So that's what I did. I just kept him propped up the whole time. Although at this point also, I was worried about the oven, how that was going to work, you know. But you'll find out about that at the end. So look, the scales are looking, I think they're looking cool, you know. They're giving it a real texture and I was really, really enjoying how it was coming out. But it was a long journey all the way around the body, all the way around to the bit, to the tail at the end. As you can see here, I'm just working around now and then I've got to reduce the size lower and lower and lower till I was using like like really minuscule little tiny pieces and just going mm, mm, mm. it just seemed to go on forever but it's so worth it at the end because it's just symmetry all the way around we've got a fly in here how's he got in here he's going sorry about the fly people this is live production for you <coughs> We're going to have to live with him because we're halfway through now. So, um, but yeah, look, I mean, he's got that sort of regal snake kind of look going on now. Uh, I was really happy, really happy with him at that point. He looked, he looked like he was coming together. So then I started on the back. Um, interesting pattern on the back of a cobra, as you well know. So I was just working with that and just building up the two different colours, which was really, it looks simple enough, but honestly, when you've touched the black, you've got to wash your hands. So first of all, I was backwards and forwards washing my hands every five minutes, and then I decided, you know what, I'm just going to put the white or the cream pattern in first, then wash my hands, and then overlay with the black. Such a good idea, so much easier. So that's what I did, and I just kept building it up and building it up. You can see where the scales aren't there yet, but the pattern, the white pattern is. And I copied that offline, as, off, off of the uh, photos as well. So I was keeping it as real and lifelike as I could. But I was really happy with how it was coming together. It just seemed to make sense. You can see in the background, I've got the, the pattern on the computer. I'm just doing what I'm doing, just following it all the time. And... Um, yeah, I mean, he was really starting to look cool, in my opinion. I thought he was looking really cool. Um, and then, yeah, just built up and then started to smooth it down, which is something that was really difficult on the back because of the white and the, and the uh, black. So it was really difficult. I had, to, um, I had to just be really precise when I was popping them down to get them level. I'm just so trying not to touch the black at any point. And it seems, well, sounds pretty simple, but honestly, really fiddly to do. But I did it, and um, it all started to blend, and I like the way that the scales all sort of parted. Now we've got traffic. We've got flies, and now we've got traffic. <sighs> Just my luck. Anyway, so I, I, as you can see on this photo, you can see how the scales all sort of come round like that. It just... Honestly, it was just like the skin had been stretched where he's up to attack. It was so cool. So I was really happy with that. Um, just, you know, for the first sculpture, I was thinking, this is brilliant. And I was thinking of all the other things I could do out of this, out of this clay. Because if I can do this... Because I think I was about, like, four or five days in. And I've already pretty much built a cobra. And I was like, this is cool. I'm enjoying this. So yeah, I just kept, um, I started to do the inside of the mouth. I had to do a bit more research because as we all know, it's spitting cobra. 
and they've got a really big gland at the back of their mouth. It's like a little tube and um, that's where they fire from, I think. Although I have seen, um, this confuses me a little bit because I have seen like with that program I keep watching, Snakes in the City, that some cobras fire from their teeth, from their fangs. They've got like little pin holes in the front of their fangs and, the, and the, they fire out from there. So I probably should do it, should have done a bit more research on it, but I definitely know they have that gland in the back of their mouth. So I put that in anyway. You can see it here. It's just that light. It's weird, but it's what I saw in the real life photos. So that's what I put into the snake. So I put that in and then obviously I had to put the um, tongue and the teeth. And then he was really starting to look something. I was like, wow, you're pretty, you're pretty mean, pretty nasty. But I was loving all the curves. It was very natural. It was very, very snake-like, very um, believable, should I say. And, and again, with the colours as well. The colours were like they are in real life, so... I was, I was like, you can't do any more. I mean, I'm sure when he's baked, it will go slightly duller and stuff like that. So I was, I was quite happy. I got some of that. Um, it's almost like liquid clay, um, almost like a varnish, but it's like a glaze that you can put on polymer clay before you bake it. And I just stuck it in the eyes, just to give the eyes a little bit more attitude and make them a bit more shiny. Uh, and that really worked as well because it just looked like he had water in his eyes as well. So it really brought the whole thing to life, really. So I was super happy with him at this point. He's looking amazing. I was like, it's so striking, all the different colours. And oh, I was really happy. You know, for my first attempt at polymer clay, I thought, you're looking great. I mean, obviously, I still had some little smoothing down bits to do at the front of the nose, as you can see here. But you can see the fingerprints in the clay. Just gave it such an unusual texture. It was really cool. So I just carried on doing all those little bits. You know, I'd done the mouth. I'd put the glands and everything else in. So I was just, I was just doing all those little bits, like marrying up the clay, making sure there wasn't any gaps, making sure that I smoothed everything off a little bit. But really, and honestly, it was pretty much close for oven at this point. And I'm like... I can't believe how quick it all came together, really. So here we go. Now, this is how I got him in the oven. You can see the intricacy of the top. That's all wire onto the grill, because all, most ovens have a grill at the top. Now, when you're using the basic oven, you don't use the grill. So I thought, perfect, because the grill's not gonna get hot. I can put the wire around the grill through his mouth and it will hold him exactly where I want him to be. And once he's fired and cooled down, I can snip the wire and he should be completely solid. Genius. So that's what I did. So there he is after he'd been, after he'd been baked, just before I'm cut, gonna cut him free. Such a weird sight to see a cobra in your oven. But yeah, he, he baked well. He stayed exactly where I put him and he baked super well. And um, he was solid, he was solid. I thought, and the skin and the and the the overall look was just mental. I was like, this is so cool. The oven's not so cool. It looks a bit grubby, but there you go. And there he is. And it's like, I was super happy with that for my first attempt. I mean, it's not something, I, you know, you wouldn't be upset to have that on your side. I mean, unless you don't like snakes, obviously. And anyone who doesn't, I appreciate it. Either you're watching this and cringing or you just haven't watched it. And I get that. If you're a snake phobia, totally get that. But for my first attempt, I thought, do you know what? He's pretty cool, isn't he? You know? He's quite big as well. I keep doing this in my sculptures because they don't actually look that big. But look at the size of him. I mean, he's big. He's a big boy. You know, he's a big, big lad. Ooh, he's a big lad. Um, and he's got some e about him as well, <laughs> but you know, all solid, all of this is all nice and solid, look, it's all smooth, proper snake-like, attitude-y, 
I was really happy with him. I thought, like, you're cool, man. So, if you want to make a Cobra, that's kind of how I did it. So you might have a go at that. Because I know a lot of people have tried, I think, to do, like, higher sculptures with polymer clay, but it falls over. Well, that's what I did. Brain started kicking in. I'm like, I need to get something over the top through all it was important to get it through the back of the head not here because you know what if i'd put it there all that would happen is it would just rip the whole lot out it had to be right at the back almost adjacent with the body so that all the pulling was going through the whole torso rather than just on the bridge of the mouth so if you are going to build one make sure you get your anchor point almost parallel with the back and then it'll hold the head will hold itself naturally but you should give it a go if you like snakes if you like cobras to give it a go super cool thing to have on your side um but yeah i was really happy with him so that's it really i just wanted to share that with you because i know you love these little videos and um i haven't posted for a few days so i thought you know what let's just get one up there just have a little chat um I'm still waiting on my clay for the dragon and stuff like that. And there's a few technical issues I've got with him, which I'll tell you about in another video. But um, that hopefully will come soon. But good news, Tim 4 Challenge. We've hit our criteria to do another one. So what I think I might do, um, I might squeeze another one of those in. Because anyone who hasn't seen those won't know what I'm doing right now. But... Uh, we have got all of these still to do. Yeah. Chat GBT's idea of what to build out of, out of tin foil. Little challenge, a little bit of fun. So I might do one of them next, if you're up for it. You seem to like them, so you've, you've got this one now. So yeah, let's do that. Let's do finish this one now. We do a tin foil challenge. Then we'll have a look at the dragon and see what we can do with dragon. All right, guys. Really nice to see you. As I say, I haven't been on for a few days, so really nice to catch up. Hope things are good. Um, and I will see you in the next one. Pew.